at the level of implicit feedback as well, um, showing the error is key. And this is one of the studies we have mm -hmm. done. Um, why showing the error is key? Because in the study we do, we did, we showed that we learn more from those errors that repeat more often. Mm -hmm. So, so we have a memory of errors, <laughs> and and we should have a memory of errors because it helps us to correct those errors faster if they repeat again in the future, and and that's why I think emphasizing the error or allowing the patient to pay attention at the error they made it's also uh, very important at the level of knowledge of results. Sorry, knowledge of uh, performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, why do you think many therapists are afraid of error and they promote the, the, the activities of normal movement, uh, Bobat concept, mm. all of this, and mm. don't let the pace make an error? Why do you think yeah. uh, many, many yeah. therapists are afraid of error? That's a great question because I think they are right. Uh, we must be afraid of error because... Patients are very sensitive to error when using the more affected arm. If they experience error, then their future decision-making for using the arm will be affected and will lead to not using it enough and deteriorating. Mm -hmm. So I understand that they try to avoid error. I think it's, a, it's appropriate. Uh, in certain way it it's contradictory with also the paper of the error because error is positive for learning right mm -hmm. but is negative for reinforcement so how to deal with this um mm, trade-off right mm -hmm. and I don't know. I mean, there are different possibilities we could test. I can imagine. I can imagine scheduling different approaches, for instance, exposing patients to small errors and then exposing them to, to big errors in other contexts, but then going back to small errors. So, so you kind of play with both sides with high reinforcement and also with salient errors, but in a way that... Um, when the patient leaves the clinic, uh, the patient is not feeling uncapable uh, or frustrated uh, and not able to use the, 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 the affected arm. Mm -hmm. But it's something, I, I mean, I don't know because I, did, I never tested uh, anything yeah. like that. Hmm. I think um, there are so many patients, so many types of patients. For example, cerebellar patients uh, need sensory error to learn. It's mm. key. It's a key, key quest, key, key issue. Um, mm. But in a praxis patients, for example, uh, there is uh, a therapy that, or there is a technique that is error-free learning. Um, so probably error training must be tailored with tailored to the type of patients. Uh, it's complicated. It's complicated. I. Mm. I try to, mm. to resolve this problem every day and it's very complicated. Mm. Yeah, I mean, error-free learning, we all have uh, this type of mechanism. It's like use-dependent uh, learning, right? So if you repeat more one task, then even if you would get no feedback at all, uh, you would still learn to, to perform that task better. Mm -hmm. But the question is, how fast would yeah. you learn it? Right? The process, yes. 